ask an historian what was mankind's greatest invention? Fire? The wheel? The sword? I would reason it's history itself. History is in fact its narrative. One carefully carried and shaped under the pen stripe of the right scribe, a villain becomes a hero, a lie becomes the truth. As I came up to the world, history had already been written. In textbooks, Skynes magazines, giant encyclopedias and the sacred writings of mankind. One of the greatest challenges of our time is to overhaul dogmatic Skynes from the interest of big business and less into the hands of honest people. My personal departure into Skynes research began about five years ago. The natural curiosity as a drive and the abundance of irritations and contradictions from narratives of established doctrine. The insight took hold that honest research is not based on academic titles, but on human values and morals. The spirit of Skynes unfolds with the birth of every human being. Deeply rooted in the soul, it explores the world for itself and sets out on a journey of discovery into a world full of riddles. This intrinsic drive is more powerful than any textbook or scientific dogma. Many people cannot or will not imagine that NASA and other space agencies are withholding important information from humanity. For decades there have been testimonies and undisputable evidence in the form of scientific documents available to the public. I've been working on NASA's photo archive for almost five years and as an independent journalist I can prove that we have been deceived for more than 50 years. Let us now travel back to the year 2001. Good morning. My name is Carl Wolf, and I was a precision electronics photographic repairman with a top secret crypto clearance in the United States Air Force. I was stationed at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. In 1965, um, in mid-1965, I was loaned to the Lunar Orbiter Project at NASA on Langley Field. Uh, Dr. Colley was in charge of that project. They had problems with a piece of uh, electronic equipment that was bottlenecking their production of photographs. I went to the facility, and when I walked into the facility, there were scientists from all over the world. I was stunned, actually, to see people at a NASA project uh, from all over the world. It didn't make any sense to me initially. Um, I was taken into the laboratory where the equipment was malfunctioning. I couldn't repair it in the dark. I asked to have it removed. A um, airman second class was in the dark room at that time. I was also an airman second class. Um, I was interested in how the whole process functioned, how the data got from the lunar orbiter to the laboratory. I asked the young man if he described the process to me. He did. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me, um, in a very distressed way, um, by the way, we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom-shaped buildings, spherical buildings, and towers. And at, at that point, I was very concerned because I knew we were working in compartmentalized security. He had breached security, and I was actually frightened at that moment and I did not question him any further. And a few moments later, someone did come into the room. Um, I worked there for three more days, and I remember going home and naively thinking, I can't wait to hear about this on the evening news. <laughs> and here it is, more than 30 years later, and I hope we hear about it tonight. And I will testify under oath before Congress that what I'm saying is the truth. Carl Wolf testified under oath 21 years ago. I will prove afterwards that he spoke the truth. 
For this, I refer to verified scanned documents of Nasser, which are available for the public. Karl Wolf died on October 10, 2018, as a result of a horrible bicycle accident. I will show the sources and each working step around transparency in the sense of honest guides and journalism. On this page we find the Apollo Image Atlas, which is categorized into the different types of cameras used during the Apollo missions. The image catalog offers us a selection of thousands of photos. Choose an Apollo mission of interest and browse the different film magazines. The preview mode gives an overview and makes it easier for us to find an eye-catching image. The destination pass is displayed here. Once you have chosen an image, you visit this page and click on the right match. You can choose between low, high, medium or raw resolution. To get the best work result, I prefer working with high or raw resolution image. Before starting the presentation of revealing, I would like to remind once again of the words of Karl Wolf. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom shaped buildings, spherical buildings and towers. He spoke with full conviction about structures and buildings in different art style. Ring buildings, mushroom shaped buildings and towers. To verify his claims, I have chosen the following photo document. If you download the photo A13-60-8697 in RAW format, you will get an unexposed image, as you can see. In full resolution, this is not the case. From my almost five years of experience in handling these photos, I can testify that this is only one of several methods of image manipulation used by NASA. The raw resolution shows a deeper detail quality. However, these image files are larger than one gigabyte, so it requires a powerful computer. We can be glad, because we got one. I will present the different working steps to make the hidden information in the photo as clearly visible as possible. For this, I use the photo processing software ACDC. The first of all steps is to crop the image in the shape we want to work with. Now we correct the underexposure and restore the photo to its original state by using the light equalizer. When this is done, we rotate the image to the required viewing angle. And now we take a first observing look at the image. In this photo, we can see the protective layer of atmosphere in the form of a thin haze. The goal is to remove the haze and make the structures shimmering through more visible. Before removing the haze, we take a closer look at the surface. I will mark those areas that, in my perception, are most striking to the eye. Striking large structures, ring buildings, mushroom shaped buildings and towers. The feature is that the circular structures shine brightly and most likely represent active light or energy sources. The sharpened eye can already see that under the protective layer a multitude of anomalies can be seen, many of them in the same size and shape, systematically placed. Now the dehaze filter comes into play, which is a very powerful processing tool. Removing the haze increases the intensity of the color value, in this case green is the dominant color. To get a more balanced image, we can improve the intensity 
by using the automatic tone correction. When these steps are done and the photo is balanced in light and color, we can optionally use a sharpness filter, depending on the quality of the photo. The main goal is to make the different structures visible. The photo has been successfully processed and will now be projected onto our 55-inch display in the next step.